Hello everyone, we're building a large bedroom unit. Now in the last video we built raised panel doors and they're there to cover the wardrobes and the cupboards. In this video we're going to be hanging those doors on some hinges. Now, have you ever searched for hinges? There are hundreds of different types. I'm not going to bore you with my search here, I'm going to cheat. I think a bit of time travel is in order. Spoiler alert here, we're in the future and behind me is our finished bedroom unit. Now I've brought you up here to show you the operation of the hinge. Now the type of hinges that we have here are not the, the standard type. Um, in our kitchen we've got standard hinges and they open to just over 90 degrees which is about that far and the same on this side if we open this door and they open up to about there. Now we want to get our clothes in and out here and it hasn't got that much room until we hit the bed. So wouldn't it be nice if these doors could open further? Well Funnily enough, do, 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 do. look at that. From the frame here out to there is 170 degrees. And it also do, does the same thing on this side as well. So it gives you loads of access to get in. Also with these hinges, they are soft close. So if I bring the, the door closed and now just push it, a spring takes it in and keeps it closed so it's not going to swing open on its own and the same on this side as well if I bring this close then the spring comes in and then closes it up like that. Now the hinges are really nice and it's those that I want to talk about next so let's uh, come out of the future and go back to where we were. This is one of the hinges which we've just been looking at in the, the bedroom unit. It's manufactured by a company called Blum and the description of this hinge is a Blum still sprung clip-on concealed hinge 140 millimeters. Now in the UK these are supplied uh, among other companies by one called Screwfix, that's where I bought these from. And the Screwfix part number is 14714. Now these hinges have got a strong spring just there, it's inside that element and it's keeping it closed at the moment. We can open this hinge up by putting our fingers behind these plates. Now these plates are what hold the hinge onto the door. That holds, that screws into the door on that side there. This plate screws onto the, the frame. Now if I put my fingers behind these two uh, tabs and now push against this lump here, the hinge will open. Now the hinge is open and there's a spring in there which we've now charged. Now that spring wants to cut your fingers off so you've got to be very careful with this. Now when we let this go, so if we close the door, as the hinge comes together all the energy in that spring will be released and, and I've got to watch my fingers here, like that. It will slam the door against the frame. So what we do, uh, we can fit a soft close mechanism to the hinge. Now let me just open this up again and let me get the soft close mechanism so I can show you how that works. Here's the soft close mechanism. Now it's a little hydraulic cylinder in there if I turn this over, but if I push against this grey piston rod Oh, it takes a lot of effort to get in. If you look just in, in here, you'll see the, the piston rod come out. So I'll release the, the grey piston now, and you can see that it comes up and uh, slowly will release uh, its energy. Now, what this means, if you clip this on the hinge, when the hinge tries to slam the door close, what it has to do is push this up. Uh, and the effort it needs to to push that up stops the uh, the door from slamming. Now you'll notice just here there is a little spring and there's two aluminium plates, one there and one there. Now let's bring the hinge in again. Here's our hinge and you'll notice that there is a T-slot just here. Now our spring and the two aluminium pieces they fit into that T-slot. Now it's an easy fit, you just put it in like this and push up and now that has locked inside that slot. Now if I come to close the hinge now, remember the, the spring in there is charged up and it really wants to close it. Well I'm going to bring it up to the stop which is just there and that's just about to unlock 
the energy in the spring. What's going to happen is that plate will go against the hydraulic damper here and then that will slow everything down. So before when we close it, it closed with a click. Now it will close with a there. And that's the soft close mechanism and that works really nicely. Now that's also a Blum part. It's called a um, Blum Blue Motion Nickel Plated 170 degree soft close mechanism, uh, 45 millimeters. Uh, they also come in packs of two as well. And as you saw, they just clip onto the back of the hinge really quite nicely. There's one other thing I want to say about these uh, hinges before we put them away, and that's to do with the mounting pads. Now this end of the, the hinge, which has this raised section in the center, this goes on the door. Uh, the other side here, this goes on the cabinet. Now you'll notice that there's like a pin sticking out here and there's a lever at the end there. Now if we go sideways, that lever actually releases this plate. So if I pull this clip up like that, this plate can now come off. Now this is really useful because what that means is this bit is held in the door. So with a push of that button there, you can now take the door off from the frame. And this is such a useful thing. When you come to perhaps want to do the painting on the door, you can simply go to the door, clip clip, and then walk away with it. Now, how do I work out where to secure this hinge onto the door and to the frame of the cabinet? It's obviously through these four holes, but I need to know where those holes have got to be on the door and the cabinet. So I thought the best way to do this was by getting a couple of offcuts of MDF and then mounting these straight to that. Now, four pieces of MDF later, I've ended up with these two. Now, the smaller piece here, this represents the, the side of the cabinet and we have two holes here, 38 millimeters in, for taking this end of the, the hinge. The other end of the hinge goes into the door. Now you notice in the door there is a flat bottomed hole just here. It's 35 millimeters in diameter and 10 millimeters deep and it's there for taking this feature here. It's where a part of the mechanism of the hinge actually goes into uh, so that's why they need this lump sticking out and it means that we've got to put a hole in our door. One of the things to watch here is when you're designing the door make sure that your door has enough thickness to not only take the depth of the a 35 millimeter hole but if you use a Forstner bit it has a point in the center and you don't want that point going all the way through so measure the bit that you're going to be drilling the hole with. Here's our hinge in place on the back of the door and on the inside of the cabinet. Let's turn around and look at it from the from the top. So we've got the side of the cabinet here and uh, the door will close. I can feel it hitting the, the hinge uh, sorry the spring mechanism there and then it clips closed. Now the soft close mechanism that fits in this T-slot and if we put that in so we bring that fits in the T-slots like that so that's nice and solid. If you watch that grey piece in there that's the piston that will come out slowly and now when I close the door it comes up I feel it hitting the the stop for the spring mechanism as I go past that it pulls in and then closes nicely. Now our model is working quite nicely with these two pieces of MDF. We have three important dimensions which we need to take a note of. The first one is on the side of the cabinet, the carcass of the uh, cabinet, and that's 38 millimeters, and that's the center of the two fixing screws from the front face of the cabinet. The other one is 20 millimeters. Now that 20 millimeters from the edge of the door goes to the center of the 35 millimeter hole, which is required at this end of the hinge. The third dimension we have is the overlap of the door to the cabinet. Now, if we look down onto the top here, we have the door just here. We've got the side of the cabinet here. This is the inside uh, of the cupboard. So the the overlap here is between that point and that point, and that comes out at 14 millimeters. See, doors of the cupboards and the wardrobes will sit on the outside of the bedroom unit frame. 
Let's take a closer look at this part of the frame. Now, shown in green are the wooden members of the frame, the vertical and the horizontal. Remember, the door will overlap the frame by 14mm. This overlap will occur on all the sides of the door that sit over the door frames. So, with the 14mm overlap around all of these doors, and the uprights being 44mm wide and the horizontals 44mm wide, that leaves a 60mm gap between the doors, vertical and horizontal. These dimensions are repeated right across the bedroom unit. And now to the dimensions all around the door and the carcass. Now the carcass is on the right, the door back is on the left here. Now if I take this out of the way, this represents our hole of the cupboard. Now it's actually twice as wide because the cupboard's going to have two sets of hinges one set on this side and one set on the other side. The other side is the mirror image of this. Now with our cupboard being 425 millimeters high all I've done is held up the hinges to a place where it looks about right and uh, 100 millimeters down from the top 100 millimeters down from the bottom is, is a good center line for the two hinges. Now we already know that the the hinges have got to be 38 millimeters away from this edge. So we know that we've got to come 38 millimeters in. The center of the hinge is going to be 100 millimeters down. Now, if we look at the hinge again, each of the hinges have got the these two screws. Now, those two screws are 32 millimeters apart, which is shown here. There's the 32 millimeters. So from our cross, which was formed by the 38 and the 100, we go 16 up, 16 down, and they are the two centres for holding the hinge onto the cabinet, which are those two screws just there. Now let's go across to the door. The door is 14 millimetres higher than the hole, and it's 14 millimetres lower than the hole, because we have an overlap of 14 millimetres all the way round. So our centres of the two holes for the, for the door, which is here, now these are the 35mm holes, the centre of those is 20mm in from the edge of the door here, so we go 20mm in, the position is going to be 100mm plus the 14 millimetres overlap. So 114 millimetres down, 20 millimetres across will give us that cross, come down another 2 to 5 millimetres because that's the gap between the hinge and we get our other centre. So these two crosses are the positions for the 35 millimetre hole which fits that end of the hinge. Each of my cupboards require two doors. And that's what we have here. These two doors are allocated for one particular cupboard and I've marked them left and right on the back of the door. So I know that these two will stay together and they will go to a particular cupboard. From that edge inwards, I've drawn a line 20 millimetres and then from this line inwards, 20 millimetres. And then from the bottom going up, 114, I've marked the first hinge and then the further 225 mark the second hinge and then did the same on that side. So they've both been marked from the bottoms of the drawers. Now we're ready to do some drilling. We've got the vacuum cleaner hose ready. And now drill the hole. We're in the centre. And that, I think, is deep enough. Just check, turn the uh, dust collector off, yeah that's beautiful. The hinges fit in to the hole thus with, uh, with this part towards the side because this is where the side of the carcass will be that uh, holds the doors. Now there's two holes that uh, need to be filled with screws. Now the screw size that I'm using is 3.5 by 16, the MDF is 18 mil and now you can bradle a centre dot. So you put one there, one there, 
number one and number two. And that's the first hinge fitted in the door. Well, I carry on and I fit all the hinges into all of the doors and then put them to one side. The next video, we're going to be taking those doors and we're going to be hanging the doors onto the frame of the cabinet. That's the first part. The second part is lining everything up. How do we get all those doors nice and square to each other and at 90 degrees? We'll be covering that in that video. Can you do something like this? Of course you can. And with that, this video is at an end. Take care, everybody. I'll see you next time. Could you do something like this? Of course you can.